Hi everyone, Dr. Biology here, and this is lesson five, monoclonal antibodies and ELISA, and that is not a person's name. Um, and this is related to A-level biology 3.2.4, which is cell recognition and immunity. Let's have a look at the spec, and this is the second page of uh, this unit. And particularly, I'm interested in this, since we have been talking about the specific immune system and the fact that B cells produce monoclonal antibodies, we're going to talk about how you can actually do uh, this uh, within a laboratory setting and looking at how you can use it to, for uh, new medicines and medical diagnosis. Um, and then looking also at the ethical issues related to the use of monoclonal antibodies. Um, I will talk about vaccines in my next video. I'll also be talking about the use of antibodies in the ELISA test. So what are monoclonal antibodies? Well, the first thing to say is they are produced by B cells, as we saw in the specific immune response, in the humoral response. Um, they're genetically identical and therefore they produce what we call monoclonal antibodies so that the, all the antibodies are identical in structure. Now why this is useful? Well we can possibly use them, we do use them in medical diagnosis and development of drugs to treat things such as cancer. Um, Antibodies, just to recap, they have a unique tertiary structure, so they'll only fit one particular antigen. So therefore, if in a laboratory you could make monoclonal, monoclonal antibodies, then they will bind to anything that you want them to. So it could be a cell antigen, or it could be to other substances, for example, a medicine. So only binding to a specific molecule. So let's look at two examples. Now, in your exam, they might ask for different, they might ask you questions on different examples, but uh, these are examples related to um, using them to target cancerous cells and for medical diagnosis, particularly used in a pregnancy test. So monoclonal antibodies can be used to treat cancer because cancer cells, they have what we call tumour markers. And those tumour markers are antigens on the surface of the cancer cell and they're not found in normal body cells. So if you can produce monoclonal antibodies that are made um, specifically for these tumour markers and then you can attach an anti-cancer drug onto the monoclonal antibody, you can then transport that anti-cancer drug directly to the tumour where they will bind. So the drug will only accumulate where there are cancerous body cells. So this will, will reduce side effects for patients and mean that the treatment is more effective. Um, an example of this is the use of Herceptin to treat breast cancer. Now, uh, they can also be used for medical diagnosis and the most famous example is the pregnancy test. So the urine pregnancy test. So it detects for the hu the hormone human chorionic gonadotrophin. Luckily you don't need to remember that fully. HCG is just fine. So the user urinates on the end of, the, of a stick and then the urine that if you're pregnant will contain HCG and therefore uh, what happens is that the antibodies for the HCG are bound to blue beads. So they uh, band blue beads and then HCD will bind to the antibody on the beads, forming an antigen antibody complex. The urine will then move up the stick and then to the area where there are antibodies to HCG that are stuck in place, which are immobilized. So this makes the test strip change colour. If no HCG, HC, HCG is present, then the beads pass through, so there's no colour change. It's interesting to note um, for current um, antibody tests for COVID-19, it's a very similar principle. Remember, just a little exam tip, that they could ask you um, any type of medical diagnosis or 
um, medical use of monoclonal, monoclonal antibodies. If they do, they will give you plenty of information, so it's important you spend time looking at that information. But the principles are the same in terms of using specific monoclonal antibodies um, that will uh, be specifically complementary to the antigen that you're interested in dealing with. So this uh, technique, these techniques can also be used in what we call an enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, assay, which again you don't need to know, uh, you just need to know it as the ELISA test. Um, and this is really good for diagnosis, so diagnosis of disease, so for example HIV. So you can identify that the patient has any antibodies to a specific antigen or any antigen to a certain antibody. So you can diagnose HIV or allergies or anything you can make an antibody for. So again, in terms of um, viral infection, you will produce antibodies. So therefore, um, you can therefore identify whether you've had a particular viral infection. One way that ELISA is used is to diagnose HIV. So the way that they do that is the following. So the, the method would be the same uh, for different types of um, infection. So HIV antigen is bound to the bottom of a well plate. So I've given you a picture of a well plate. This is a well plate. And patient's blood plasma is added to those wells. Now, if there are any HIV specific antibodies, these will bind to the HIV antigen and become stuck to the bottom of the well. So the well is then washed, um, usually with distilled water, to remove any unbound antibodies. You then add a second antibody that has an enzyme attached to it. So if the HIV antibody is present, then it attaches. So the well is washed out again, and then you can add a substrate, and that reacts with any bound enzyme to produce a colour change. Uh, so this indicates if the patient has HIV antibodies in their blood and, and is therefore infected with HIV. Here's a useful diagram. So you can see in the well, this is the bottom of the, one of the wells. So HIV antigen is bound to the bottom. Um, and then you can see that antibodies, um, basically the sample is added and therefore uh, antibody that is specific to the HIV antigen, it binds, whereas others won't bind. Then you wash it out, you wash the well, and then you add a secondary antibody that has the attached enzyme, and that attaches to the antigen. So uh, therefore you've got the enzyme bound. And then what you do is you wash it out again, and then you add the substrate and then there is a colour change. If there's a colour change, that shows a positive result in this case for HIV. Now with all uh, science of this kind, you obviously need to think of the ethical issues. Again, in, a, uh, in an exam situation, they might give you some information, uh, but these are generally, these ethical issues, they apply not just for monoclonal antibodies, but also for things like vaccines and vaccinations, which I'm going to talk about in my next video. So the first one is that you need to be aware that to make these antibodies and tumour cells, OK, you need to use mice. So, so obviously um, you need to induce cancer deliberately into the mice to produce what we call a hybridoma. So a hybridoma is the antibody and a cancerous cell. The reason it's a cancerous cell is so that it divides um, uncontrollably to produce lots and lots of antibodies. However, that does mean there's a problem in terms of the fact that you have to kill the mice. Um, there is risks of the therapy as well. Uh, sometimes you can have really severe side effects. There have been some deaths associated with the use of monoclonal antibodies. Um, and it's important that people are fully aware of the risks that, that they're putting themselves under and they need to give their consent. Another thing, this is not just about monoclonal antibodies, but also uh, testing 
all drugs is the safety of them because, uh, for example, in 2006, six healthy volunteers suffered multiple organ failure in a trial. So all survived, but there are safety issues that you really need to take account of. So that brings us to the end of this video. Please do subscribe if you haven't already. I would really appreciate that. Um, in my next video, as part of the topic of immunity, I'm going to be looking at vaccines. And we're going to be looking at how vaccines work um, and also a bit about the ethical considerations. I'll see you next time.